start the afternoon with the first race of the afternoon already coming to the line. Well, as I mentioned, we're looking forward to some very close racing. And I wonder if I'm going to be made out to be an absolute liar or will we? We've got one. That's a slight tip say they made a race on the line. As you can see, in race one, we go into that first corner. Exactly what we're talking about is very, very tight. But as you can see, a lot of good riders out there at the moment. Tim Fay showing exactly what it's all about. Mike Coe just got himself up in the second place, but Tim Fay really showing you what it's all about. Desperately trying to close the gap is Russell Foot in fourth. There's a change there in second, as you can see, that we, uh, you know, Royce Eyes will come through after the mistake there from my courage. He's laid machinery down, but looks to be okay, and picks himself up and tries to get back to the Tim Bell and then Ian Lee Amos went into it, but no such thing today we hope for Tim. Great to see him back in action. The last time playing goes for Tim Bay, looks over his shoulder to see.
we've got a real fight in the hands this time. Again, one or two riders finding it difficult to find a place on that start line. Shane, and Roger's come on the inside and he's taken Shane coming out that pit bend. 
as they come into the bottom bend, Roger's the new leader now from Shane Baker, from John Hiscock. So you take the last lap flag, it's Roger Meader, still Bailey from Shane Baker, from John Hiscock. They come around the pit bend, it's still Roger Meader, Shane Baker and John Hiscock. Down the back straight they go, Roger's pulled way in the lead now as they come into the last bend. Shane Baker's still in second and John Hiscock in third. As they come up to take the checker flag, Roger Meader's going to be the winner, from Shane Baker, from John Hiscock. Well, it certainly hasn't taken Roger Mesa very long to weigh this circuit up. He's certainly got himself a nice fast line around this circuit. So when him and Kane, Ken Lane meet, it certainly will be a good old ding-dong. Thank you. 
he's got a chance to speak to him at the end of the day and he says that uh, they really have started to put some results together. They're yeah, going very, very well. We look across just underneath him. We've got number 90. Phil Pittman picked up the result for being the best performing novice down at the Yeovil meeting. Again, some very, very impressive Outfits, he did indeed get himself a place in the A final. A very good ride, and we expect to see a lot from perhaps Phil Pittman. Somebody that was flying in practice was Roy McGuigan. So, uh, Bob Banks, we've seen in this centre before as well. These really is a good lineup of, well, dare we call them novices. Great V, I think we'll uh, stick with because you've got some very, very quick and experienced outfits out there. Phil Pittman going very, very wide on that bottom bend. It's allowed Simon what he loves to come through on the inside. Bob Banks goes up there in third. I'm sure there'll be an anxious lot of thoughts going through Phil Pippen's mind as he goes down that back straight. He knows he must have gone into that bottom corner a bit too fast. It pushed him very, very wide. This time he's got it a lot better. There's a much better line from Phil Pittman. Two names, of course, that really have been with Glass Track for an awful long time down in the West Country. Phil Pittman is the driver. Justin Westerway is the passenger. Two youngsters and indeed take a lot of advice from a lot of very experienced people. The last lap player goes for them. Simon Wally Here's Gary Lane really saying that they're enjoying the way they're seeing the sun in for this year. Bob Baxter not being able to get in contact with them to get down that back straight. Here's John Kerr looking to make a difference on this last bend for the checker flags. Gonna go for outfit number 19, that is Phil Pittman and Justin Westaway. Diamond Waddy Love finishing in second place with Gary Lane. And third place being taken by Bob Baxter and John Kerr. Race 15, race 16, the final of the expert sidecars is 7, 43, 17, 51, 39 and 184. Right, we move on to race 11, heat one of the Grade B solos. Should we pop the cutting to Nancy Bougar, Bruce Richards, Bob Arnold, Mike Smith, Chris Malone, Mike Vernon, Derek Bruce, 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 Looks like Andy Bougard's come through the centre of two riders to take up the lead. But I can't quite see for me. I think it's number 64, Chris Malone. It's on the inside from Andy Bougard. But back to the front is still Andy Bougard taking a really wide line which is allowed Steve Malone to come back on the inside of him and take the lead. Back in third is Paul Friend. Bob Clinton's fourth. Back to the front. And then Bougard with Paul Friend. Comes up on the outside. Back to the fourth. Back to the front. Malone's motor seemed to die a bit on the inside. To allow Andy Bougard to come up on the outside of him. Paul Friend is still tucked in behind him. They're coming up to take the last lap flag. It's anyone's race to these three. Challenged by Paul Friends, who's come on, on the outside on the last bend to try and take second spot. As they come up to take the second place, Paul Friends just got second by Andy Bougard third. Paul Friends is going to be fourth. Two, one, 37 and 4. Winner's time, 127. If anyone in the pits can tell us who number 37 is, because it's news to us. We've, we've got no 37 in the programme. So we'll have to wait and see who he is. On to race number 12. We should have John Moore, Andy Pannington, John Trevor, John Bailey, Tony White, Fred Saunders, Mike Wells, Dave Pepper, Mike Webster, Mark Uzzle, Martin Fisher, David Bailey and Ken Tapper. And they take the away, and it looks like Mike Wells has taken the away. Who is Martin Fisher? Still Mike Wells in the front from Martin Fisher in second place. But Mike Wells has left... Taken over from where he left off in Yale Bell last week when he 
won the novices championship down there. But Mike Wells is first. Drop down. But back to the front. Still Mike Wells is first. From Andy Paddington. From Dave Pepper. From Martin Fisher and Paul. As they come round the pit. Pit bend is still Mike Wells. From Andy Paddington. From Dave Pepper. Third still Dave Pepper, fourth still is Martin Fisher. But as they come round the pit bend, they come up and take the last lap flag. Still Mike Wells take the right one. Still Mike Wells in the lead from Andy Pennington went very wide on that bottom bend. From Dave Pepper. From Mark uh, Hazel. Looks like we've lost Martin Fisher down on that bottom bed, but the back of the road. Right down to the left. Mark Hazel looks like he's going to take four. Right down to the right. Right down to the right. Still more heats for Solo Grade B. Move on to heat three. We should have Jason Baker. No Ainsley Barwick, who we've been told is on starter. Rob Vincent, Glenn Seabright, Andy Northover, Steve Mander, Jason Jennett, Joel Davies, Basil, Basil March, William Dowling, Mike Shirley, Kevin Buck and Robin Wright. As we move into race 13, they come under starter's orders. The green flag's up and the tapes are away. The front is a good start for number... Glenn Seabright's up there in the first place. But I can't quite see at the moment who that is in the lead. I think it's number... I'll wait till he comes around the pit, then I'll be able to pick his number up. I've been told it's... Well, let's tell you, Glenn Seabright is well up there, but back to the front still. Every time of the lead, from Jason Jennett, from Will Dowling. The brother of Mike Dowling. Still, Kevin back up front. Old Lady Jennings, Old Bill Dowling. Old Lady Jennings, Old Bill Dowling. I've got it down in this right. I lose two old sixes, but... Then it's next to me, right? I understand that is an addition to your program in this right. Old Lady Jennings, the back of the front is 3 to 7, Kevin Bunch. The lead from 1 to 5, Old Lady Jennings. Take the last lap, right? 
And we have indeed got uh, one or two riders problems down the other end. I know the radios aren't working tremendously well, but already I can see the St. John's have seen. One of the 251, ah, 350s. Don't see too many of them these days, do we? Right, good to see. If a lot of these riders have got the 350s they used to have, then we have got some very quick riders coming to the line. Mark Demroyke, he's doing this to confuse me. <laughs> he's got his levers back on again. <laughs> I do apologise. Down at Sorge, we had a big problem with Mark Dimmer because he decided to change others and never told me. <laughs> oh, Andy Wickham, I can see on the line as well. So we have got some very, very quick 250s out there. Very quick, would you say? It looks like Mark Dimmer has dived in the second. Andy Wickham's up there in third. That uh, looks like Melton, Malcolm Smart back there in fourth place, 271. But the lead with Andy Gong, number 261. Well, I mentioned about very quick 350s. You can now see exactly what I mentioned. Well, very quick 350. You went to, to see a 350 race, and indeed some very quick riders came through from it. Andy Gong was a man that always used to ride 350s as well as 500s. He's now solid over two 250s, of course. Mark Dimmer. Andy Wickham as well. Bill Buckley and Bruce Richards. Bruce Richards has got the best of it into fifth place. Front three beginning to get spread out a little bit now, though, as they come round that pit bend for the third time. Mark Dimmer is still there in second place. And he's in the middle of the third. He's still there in fifth. Oh, I'm sure the power of the 350s would do this style of circuit. And Andy Gong is the best of the time. He's in the second place. Mark Dimmer gets second. Andy Wickham gets third. Goes Chris Malone there, number 64. Andy North over 85. Mark Seabright has just been crossed out in my program. It's not going. <laughs> Basil Arch, number 174. John Chains, 193. And Roy Sizemore, 231. Well, Roy, of course, we know he did walk back to the bit. Roy is indeed out there. Great to see Roy out again. So. Tumbley took in the expert final, uh, not proving too damaging. Oh, indeed, we see Roy Sizemore starting to move up the old second place at the moment, just behind Chris Malone. Chris Malone it is the leader. Third place. Oh, John Shane's after tipping over on the line gets back into the action. So he's a lap down on the rest of the field, but good to see that he's up and going. Three sides more then takes over the lead. Not that better still there in first place. Oh, talking to the organisers of the North Park's event on Bank Holiday Monday and they said to me they were going ahead with the Past Masters event which is Luke Coffey's team against Julian Wood's team. One of those the moment. Oh, the Past Masters getting a little bit of practice each time. For the last time in the second of the 350 qualifiers, Roy Sizemore looks as if he's going to make sure of it. Great to see Roy back in form after hobbling back to the pit from that expert final. Second place. Second. Tom Ledbetter gets third. I'm not going to call him exactly because he is, of course, a lap come through the fourth place. We have a very depleted field for the expert final. Ken Lane, of course, never made it to the start of the first one with mechanical problems. We're actually being left for the competition to be between Ken Lane and John Hiscott for the expert final. <laughs> There's only two out there, I still get one of the names wrong. The Rodney Sirius that leads from John Hiscock is trying to up in second place. They go into that pit bend for the first time. It is Roger Mesa and Steve Bailey that look to have it well and truly weighed up. You'll see that the outfit of Roger Mesa slows up an incredible amount going into that bottom bend. John Hiscock looks to be able to go in that little bit faster, but it means he's coming out. Two 
entirely different styles to remember, of course, they are two outfits that have been built by totally different people. John Hiscott has a lot of hand in building the outfit, he rides, so he knows exactly how it handles. You see the different style going in that bottom bend completely from Roger Meter and Steve Bailey. The last half flag goes... Down goes Steve Bailey once again for that pit bend. Very important that a passenger gets his weight incredibly low on these very, very tight bends. There's always the chance that you can lose that little bit of drive, but you can see that Roger looks to have it well and truly weighed up. Takes the checker flag as he comes last up. That's the expert final race 16 in your program. John Hiscock and Shane Lapple picking up second place. And I know I'm going to lap score this one myself. But a win for number 51, Roger Meester and Steve Bailey. And in second place, number 184, John Hiscock and Shane Lapple. The winning time, 1-12. Possibly the quickest we've seen this afternoon, and yes, confirmed. So, the fastest time of the afternoon so far for the sidecars, 1.12 the time. The numbers that go in there are first place 51 and second 184. We jump over races 16 and 17. <laughs> I think it's about time I had a rest. I realised it was 17 and 18 as well. Yeah. Well, I think you've got a few more slide cars out there, Steve, but I'll give you a chance to go for race 19. Thank you, Jim. Yes, yeah, so I hope, hopefully there'll be more than two. We should have 15, 31, 33, 90, 77, and 118. So we've got Jason Steer, number 15, 31, Neil Page. 33, John Hunt, 90, Bill Pittman, 77, Simon Wally Love, and 118, Bob Baxter. It was a great shame the expert final finishes it did only with two starters, but let's hope the people that were involved in the accident that they're all okay. And uh, if we do have any news, we will pass it on to you. But still, back to race 19, the sidecar B final. So reading from the inside, we've got Bob Baxter, Neil Pays, John Hunt, Phil Pittman, uh, Simon Mordy Love is right on the outside, so it must be Jason Steer wanting from the outside. Takes away and it's Phil Pittman's made a very good start. From Bob Baxter, from Neil Pays, then it's Simon Mordy Love, Jason Steer, and then John Hunt. As they come round for the first time, it's still Phil Pittman in the lead. From Neil Pays, from Simon Mordy Love, from Bob Baxter, from Jason Steer, from John Hunt. Still Phil Pittman got a quite a comfortable lead already after the first lap. Rob Neil Pace, good tussle for third, Simon Body Love and uh, Bob Baxter. Bob Baxter trying to wide outside, Simon Body Love keeping the tight inside. Still Phil Pittman in the lead. Simon Body Love comes right through the second place. Neil Pace is third, Bob Baxter fourth. Jason Steer fifth, John Hunt is sixth. As Jim was saying, Simon Body Love is very pleased with himself already this season. He said the outfit is going really well. But as they go into the bottom bend, still Phil Pittman in the lead. Off the back to them in second place. John Bond down in third. Neil Pace had a pull to for his lost his passenger. John Hunt in third. But still Phil Pittman way out the lead now, just approaching the bottom bend. Coming up to take the checker flag, it's going to be Phil Pittman the winner of the Psych RB final. Bob Baxter's going to be in second place. Simon Wally Love's going to be third, Jason Steele's going to be fourth, and John Hunt's going to be third. So we think the riders to watch for in the, this race, we've got 24, Dean Camia, who had a very quick time in, his, in the first heat. We've also got number 40, Dave Bleakin, 158 who is uh, Mike Appleton, and all got very quick 250s. We've also got 77 Rob Vincent, who's also got a good 250. Bilson, this, this looks a real wide open race. It looks like it's going to be Keith Richards from the inside, from Anthony Wiggins. Mike Appleton's there as well. Looks like in the centre, Dave Bleakin and Jack Walker. Trying to find out where Dean Cameron is. Looks like he's one, two, three, four, five in 
from the inside of the circuit. So Dean Cameron and Dave Ligon are virtually next door to each other. Also there is Bernie and Madame Bill Sims. Takes away. Dean Cameron's made a very good start with the Bill Sims, as they go into the first bench, Dean Cameo, from Dave Bleakin, from Jack Walker, from Bill Sims, take the back straight for the first time. This lad has got a very quick 250 and it's Dean Cameo. Also Dave Bleakin there, second. Third, Jack Walker. But back to the front. This very quick 250 of Dean Cameron, leaving Dave Bleakin by half a straight already. It's just a good tussle for third going on between Jack Walker and Bill Simmons, and also Bill Bowling coming up there. But Bill Simmons coming to the lead. Bob Dave Bleakin. 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 Bob Dave
Still running Wigan with a, with a very handsome lead from Neil Page. Jim was saying back this year for the first time in 17 years. Jason Steer back in third. So into the pit men for the last time. Still Roy McGuigan from Neil Page from Jason Steer. Five men, any mechanical phase, I think this is going to be the finishing order. As they come around the last bend, as they come up to the line, it's Roy McGuigan's going to be the winner. Neil Page is going to be second. Jason Steer is going to be third. I shouldn't think we should see Shane Baker out there. So we should have 48 Mark Goddard, no Andy Bray, 96 Chris Hall, and 118 Bob Baxter. Tapes away, and we've got, looks like we've only got two outfits. We've got Bob Baxter looks way out his own at the moment, and oh, I think it's just number 96. That's it. Two horse race for this one. Ha ah, ha. Jim was saying that. No, not horses, they're fine. Anyway. Bob Baxter in the lead from 96, Chris Hall. As they come down to the bottom bend for the second time, still Bob Baxter with a substantial lead from 96, Chris Hall. Riders Association. 
from Staple Cross. So if you're interested in going to see top class racing, then on the 21st, of course, next Sunday, you can see at Staple Cross, Steve Schofield, Mark Lorem, Paul Hurry, Joe Screen, and Trevor Banks. It's been unfair, really, wasn't it, to give him his first senior grass track against those sort of competitors, but there we are. I suppose they think he's good enough. We've seen him on the Speedway. We've seen him on the schoolboy events as well. Good to see that Graham Hurry and colleagues are organising grass tracks as well as their involvement in Speedway. We are ready for the rerun of the 350 final of the N4. Andy Wickham this time has got into the front, so Andy Gorm has now got the work to do. Andy Wickham and Tom Ledbetter has got out there as well. Roy Sides will cut through the inside of all three of those riders and gets himself into second place. So we really do have a race on our hands this time. I'm quickly corrected by my lap scorers. As I was watching the action coming off the pit bend, I didn't realise we'd lost riders on this bottom bend. So the race once again suffers with a red flag. We look to that start anxiously again because... Remember the consequences. We had Andy Gomm making a great start before his first stop. Andy was made the best of the second one. Third time out. So right up there with him is Andy Wickham. Tom Ledbetter starts in the third place. Andy Wickham being forced to go very, very wide. Tries to pull it back in on the exit of that bin. He allows Tom Ledbetter and Roy Sizemore to get up there with him. Those three locked together in second place at the moment. Andy Gomez again got away as he did. In second place, Roy Sizemore coming through very quickly on the inside. Roy Sizemore really riding a brilliant top corner. Goes in the pit bend in second place behind Andy Gong, who's got away from the rest of the field. Tom Ledbetter now under pressure for Mercedes. Tom Ledbetter now under pressure for John Blake and Malcolm Smart as we look to the front once again.
fast speed, it's driving harder that big bend. in the semi-final. He blows and crosses the line in second place. Ian Ward Finley picking up second and number 77. It is, of course, Simon Waddy Love and Gary Lane. They get that very important third place. Row eight, that's Pete Roden and Ward Finley. In third place, number 77, Simon Waddy Love and Gary Lane. The winning time, 1.13. A number only, 51, 208 and 77. The winning time, 1.13. <laughs> right, that one raffle prize is a pink ticket, number 94. Everybody's going to think, why wasn't that one playing? It's because I said there was no reference numbers for that lot of tickets. It was pink 94, reference number AJ997354. So there was another one in there. Oh, my apologies, if anybody's got that ticket, pink 94. <laughs> no, I don't. Everybody's saying to me, they're probably throwing me in the rubbish bin now, but nah, that couldn't have happened. Right, let's turn our attention to the racing. We're with race 30, it's heat one of the open solo racing, so everything thrown in together. It's juniors, experts. If they want to, remember some of those 350s? I wonder. Some of those quick 350s might indeed come out in the open racing. It's up to 500cc. Race 30, heat one, is looking for three only to go through into the first semi-final. Oh, now looks as if we are ready. Indeed, the yellow flag goes away, the green flag comes up and we get underway. Malcolm Smart is the guy in the front of the very poor figure, Malcolm Smart. Keith Richards is up there in second, but Andy Gom is on the inside of Keith Richards. Andy Gom is moving through in the blue and white leathers. That's Andy Gom moving in the second place, but Malcolm Smart still away from the rest of them. The very, very cool thing of Malcolm Smart. Keith Richards is still up there in third place. In getting close to the front again, Malcolm Smart went a little bit wide and Andy Gom took advantage of it. Andy Gom now moves through into first place. He's being put under pressure. He's getting away from the rest of the field. Remember, it is three that go through. So, Andy Gom making sure of it. He comes around and takes the last lap back inside. Now, this is we don't get any mechanical problems at all. Andy Gong starting to catch one of our trailers. He dives into that last bend. The yellow flag's being held a lot, but Andy Gong goes around the outside. That's how they finish. Those are the three qualifiers. So look at across the line, Ben Howe is third from the inside. Then we've got John Cook, Bob Vincent's there, Nigel Green's there. Mike Dowling's there. I can't see Mark Seabright at the moment. Mark Seabright's just come out from the pit box. So we'll see where he goes. Looks like he's going to pick one of the inside gates. Yes, he's coming into line in between 204, Simon Gooch and Mike Dowling. They're under Sarta's orders. Green flag is up. The tapes are away. Mark Seabright's made a good day. So is Nigel Green. So it's Nigel Green from Mark Seabright, from Ben Howe, from Mike Dowling in that order. Nigel Green drifts slightly wide. Mark Seabright's got the fast line coming out the bend. Comes right underneath the wheeling Nigel Green. So it's Mark Seabright from Nigel Green, from Ben Howe, from Mike Dowling. Still in the lead from Nigel Green, from Ben Howe. Mike Downing is fourth, Rob Vinson is fifth, Ben Saunders is sixth. 
Lee up in race 35. 90. Phil Pittman, Jason Westaway. They come to the line. Number 33, John Hunt and Bob Frost. 184, John Hiscock, Shane Lapham. 51, Roger Misa, Steve Bailey. 208, Pete Roden. And 77, Simon Waddy Love. So, pick three from there. Three only, of course, it is go to the line. Interesting perhaps to see that uh, both John Hiscock and Roger Meester have taken the far side of the gate. Green flag is aloft, away we go. It looks to be a great start for Phil Pittman. He leads as they're going down that back straight, going very, very quick in that first bend. But Roger Meester just edges in front of him, going into the centre of the bend. And Phil Pittman somehow managed to miss the back end of Roger Meester as they went through the middle of that bend. Oh, Roger pulled it very, very hard, as he has been doing during the day, to try and get the drive coming out of that bottom bend, and somehow, Phil Pittman and Justin Westaway managed to miss it. Again, you can see exactly what happens. Roger Misa is pulling it tight in the middle of the bend, but Phil Pittman is still driving when he gets to the centre. John Hitchcock looks to still have problems with his machinery again. He and Shane Lapham look down at the bike. Still managed to keep it going at the moment, but again, the helmets go as they look down. Molly Love takes advantage. He moved round John Hiscock. Gets himself into third place. Roger Meester is still playing with Steve Bailey, still looking very superior up the front of the second semi final. Problems then again for John Hiscock as he goes to the centre of the track. But the checkered flag goes for somebody who certainly hasn't got any problems. It's Roger Meester and Steve Bailey. Bill Pittman and Justin Westerwell have been settled. Coming round off that bottom bend to pick up a very important third place. It takes them into the final. That's number 208, Pete Roden and Ward Finlay. Oh, as we look to the line for heat five of the solo open. Wayne Nilly, I haven't seen this afternoon. Dean Camera, I've certainly seen. Marty Phillips, Bob Arnold, John Bailey, Chris Coles, Glenn Seabright, Tim Fay, Paul Friend, Stuart Williams, and David Bailey. Oh, Paul Friend has certainly been out on a lot of machinery. He's certainly been getting better as the afternoon's gone on. And going into that first corner. Stuart Williams right up there in second place on the back wheel of Tim Fay. Both of those two drifting a little bit wide. It's Paul Friend that's solid in the third place. They break going up the back straight. Oh, the lead with Tim Fay at the moment. He comes round off that pit there for the first time. But he's already being put under pressure by Wayne Lilly, that's number six in your program. But Stuart Williams really does look like he's now. Still there in fourth place, fighting every inch of the way, trying to get back on terms with those front three. The last lap flag goes to Stuart Williams. I don't think there's going to be anybody to catch him. Fourth place holds second at the moment. Still there in third. Those are three important places. KSF 357T. If you're interested in an AGV helmet, they say only worn once, it says here. Health is around £50 if possible. Really avoided him as they change lines coming just in front of us. I think all our hearts stopped there because they changed lines. And Will James, credit to him, did a brilliant piece of evasive riding. And Paul Mitchell stayed with it as well. You can see Will James as well as he's got his Russell's foot is going to the inside line. Bob Camden is there on the outside line. 
style of Will James. He really has got away from the rest of the field. You can play with the same mark after that first lap, but that's all you can argue. Well, Rob Hall into the second place. Rob Camden is still there in third, but he's under pressure from Russell Foot. Remember that in first place, that third place. Russell Foot has just got him back again going up that back straight. Rob Camden on the outside, Russell Foot on the inside. Rob Hall has to go with Will James takes it, Paul Mitchell coming round off that top end, but he's going to go second place to Paul Russell Foot just holds it. That's really the between them, so it looks as if Russell Foot just got it on the line. One, four, six, Will James. In second place, number 29, Paul Mitchell. Third place, number nine, Russell Foot. The winning time, equaling the fastest of the day so far, 120. By number only, 146, 29 and nine, the winning time, 120. Race seven it is that we move on to, heat seven I should say, and Steve, I need to get my voice back for that one. Thanks Jim. Heat 7 coming to the line. The way we go, those starts are certainly quick. Right over the back. Anyway, Mark Timber took the lead from John Shane to go into the first 10. It's Mark Timber from John Shane's. Andy Wickham's well up there as well. But still, it's Mark Timmer in the lead to come into the pit bend for the first time. It's number 33, Mark Timmer from 193, John Shane. Andy Wickham coming right there on the outside of the pit. And also Andy Paddington. Andy Boudoir in front of us pulled out with motor problems. But back to the race. It's 33, Mark Dibber. We're in the pit bend for the second time. Still in the lead. Andy Wickham's up in second now, number 50. One time three, John Strange is there. That's still with Mark Dibber in the lead. By half a straight from Andy Wickham. John Shane is under pressure from number 206. Andy Paddington is one up there as well. As they come to take the last lap flag, Mark Dibber from Andy Wickham. From John Shane, from number 206. Still Mark Dibber in the lead from Andy Wickham. From John Shane's. Jerry Simpson, number 206, has been for 16 Andy Paddington spin. As we come out to the last bend, it's going to be 33 Mark Timmer the winner. Number 50 Andy Wickham is going to take the second spot. Anyway, back to race 39. We should have number one Bob Creddington, number eight John Moore, 23 Mike Trevitt, 25 Jason Baker, 35 Dave Barnaby, 39 Gordon Bayer. 74 Duncan Torres, and we're away. The side Duncan Torres went very far. John there as well. And John Trevin. As they come round the first bend, it's Saul Jones, John Priest, and Duncan Torres. As they come into the pit bend for the first time, it's John Priest, Saul Jones, and Duncan Torres by there for the first three times. So it's Duncan Torres, but John Priest has come back a little down the outside of the back straight. As they go to the pit bend, it's John Priest and Duncan Torres side by side. Bill Jones is back in third. As they come out of the pit bend, as they come out of the pit bend, John Priest has gone very wide to allow Duncan Torres to stretch out about four or five bike legs, if not more. As they come into the pit bend, it's Duncan Torres. John Priest, Sir Jones, and the threat now for Mike Simmons. John Priest has gone wide yet again, Sir Jones comes up on the inside. But Dalton Torres has stretched out quite a good lead now as they come into the last turn. Coming up with the checker flag, it's going to be 74 Dalton Torres. You certainly get a lot more closer race than these two valves. Anyway, 
We won't go into that. They should be 8 John Moore, 27 Tom Lepeter, 79 Cyril Jones, Mike Vernon and Basil March, Colin Haynes and Martin Toop, Mark Basil, John Preach, sorry, say that again, John Priest, Jack Walker, David Bailey, Rob Wright and Ken Tapper should all be on the line. So can John Priest make it a hat-trick of wins in the two-valve event? Or will Tom Lepeter put one over him? We shall wait and see. Tom Lepeter there with a very distinctive Bellevue race jacket with the black club on the race jacket. And the railway. As we go to the first phase, it's John Breed. Looks like we've left Tom Bedford on the line, which is a sorry sight to see. Anyway, back to eight, it's Martin Toop in the lead. John Breed second, Jack Walker third, John Moore fourth. As we come round the pit turn, it's Martin Toop, John Breed, John Moore fourth. John Breed, John Moore down to the bottom for the second time. Martin Toom in the lead from John Priest, from Jack Walker. As they come into the pit turn, it's Martin Toom with John Priest closing on Martin Toom now. John Priest is still third. As they go into the bottom for the third time, Martin Toom is still in line for the lead. Martin Toom from John Priest, from Jack Walker. John Priest really close in on Martin Toop, they're side by side as they go into the pit turn. It's Martin Toop on the inside, John Priest on the outside. That's the last lap play. That's the end of the bottom set, it's still Martin Toop from John Priest. That's the end of the bottom set, John Priest on the outside, we've got the quicker line up that back straight. As they come into the pit turn, it's for the last time, it's John Priest now from Martin Toop, from Jack Walker. That's the end of the bottom set. John Moore is coming round the last bench. As they come into the pit turn, it's Martin Toop from Jack Walker. John Moore is coming round the last bench. Right, right, 40, right on the line. And we're away. And the heat switches into the first bend is Nigel Green, 142, Mark C. Bryce in second, 167. Simon Gittins is there. So is Keith Richards. And Andy Gold. Back to the front, and Mark C. Bryce come on the inside of Nigel Green. Come on, come on, come on. Mark C. Bryce took the title line. He's back in front, number 167, Mark C. Bryce. Nigel Green, 142. Second, and Simon Gittins is third. Andy Gordon's coming up in third. Martin Gordon, Bob Nigel Green, Bob Simon Gittins, Andy Gordon, and Ben Howard's come through the field now. Be up there in the big place. It's still Martin Gordon, Martin Gordon, Martin Gordon, Martin Gordon. We say it's only three more races to go with three cracking races they look to be. This semi-final, be it listed the second semi-final, Mark Seabite we know is through, Nigel Green is through, two very, very quick riders from the first semi. But look what we've got coming to the line for the second semi-final. A lot of very, very quick riders, they're all used to the circuit by this time of the day. We get underway with the second semi-final as they come down past us. Will James has got the break from the centre of the field. Will James just round that first corner looking to be totally in control. There's a lot of changing going on for that second, third and fourth. Will Mitchell has made the best of it. As they go off the back straight, it is Paul Mitchell that's got it in second place. Stuart Williams coming all the way around the outside.
from the spectator side to the inside of the track. So under starters orders, green flags up, and we're away. We'll come in there. Simon Gibbons is to the nasty summer right in the centre of the circuit. Back to the front is Will Jane. Red flag, everyone. Red flag. That certainly was a nasty cover, but all credit to the riders, lads. You certainly did well to avoid Simon Gibbons when he went there. He went right down the middle, but well done, lads. You've avoided back to race 44. Looks like the lads are lining up in the same groups as they started for. So, reading from the spectator side, we've got Mark Seabright. We should have Stuart Williams next to him, then Andy Gong, then Will James, then Ben Howe, then Paul Mitchell, then Nigel Green, then Duncan Tollers, Keith Richards, Cyril Jones, Russell Foote. Take two away, and we're off. Mark Seabright's ready for the level side of the as we go into the first place, here's Will James, Mark Seaboy. We've got him. Looks like the two lads have hit again. It's Stuart Williams and Mark Seaboy have gone down in a big way. Anyway, back to the front. We've got another red flag. Another red flag, Marshalls. So the first two gates nearest to the crowd are empty now with Mark Seaboy and Stuart Williams. We're in, so nearest to us now is Andy Gong. Then it'll be Will James coming into his gate position. <laughs> then we've got Ben Howe, Paul Mitchell, Nigel Green, Duncan Tonhurst, Russell Foote, and Cyril Jones. It looks like we've lost Keith Richards as well. So it looks like we're down to eight riders, but... Right the starter's orders. The starter is not happy with some of the riders up there. Looks like Keith Richards is just coming into the background. Looks like he's going to take his rides now. So here we go. First time of asking, and we're away. Will Mitchell and Duncan Collins, as we go to the first turn, it's Will James, Nigel Green, Russell Foote. Paul Mitchell, Cyril Jones. Will Jones along the back straight into the pit bend in the lead. Duncan Connors, Russell Foot, Cyril Jones, and from Russell Foot taking the inside line, Duncan Connors taking the outside line, Nigel Green in four. Cyril Jones is finished. Russell Foot got the best of Duncan Connors to come in second spot now. Those are going back in four, but back at the front of the field, we're going to come to the lead. There's a goal in that order. But back to the front, with quite a good lead now, Will James, coming into the pit turn, to come and take the last lap flag. It's Will James from Duncan Collins now, Russell Foot's gone back to four, trying to bring up the third. Those are going to come to the lead. Well on their last lap now, coming up the back straight, still Will James. Dr. Duncan Tollers in second, Nigel Green third, Russell Foot fourth, Cyril Jones is fifth. Coming out the last bend, it's going to be a Will James win from the one more thing. Keith Richards eight and Paul Mitchell nine. Oh, 